our goal is to make the air tables in the ECM match the actual airflow through the engine. So how do we measure the airflow through the engine? If you have ever taken an engine theory class like the one at MMI, you should have been told about the five efficiencies of an internal combustion engine. When it comes to high performance, volumetric efficiency is a major player. If you had an empty mason jar that holds 100 cubic inches, and you took the lid off, how much air flows into the jar? It's a safe bet that atmospheric pressure would push 100 cubic inches of air into the jar very quickly. Simple enough. However, if instead of taking the lid off, we cut a 2-inch hole in it, super glued a pencil to it, pushed it open half inch, then back to the closed position, taking only six thousandths of a second from the start of opening to finished closed position. Now, how much air flows into the jar? Most likely not 100 cubic inches. If 80 cubic inches flow into the 100 inch 3 jar before the valve closes, then the VE is 80%. Volumetric efficiency is how much air the cylinder can hold versus how much air actually makes it in on the intake stroke before the intake valve closes. A couple of side notes here. 1. Half of an inch is a common amount of valve open on a Harley engine. 2. Six thousandths of a second is about how long a Harley intake valve stays open at 6,000 RPM. Performance tip. With the valves open such a short amount of time, to boost performance you need to make the airflow faster to get more air in before the valve closes. We call this, port velocity. There are several things that affect VE, exhaust system, throttle body size, heads, cams. These things we call hard parts and are generally already installed when we put the bike on the dyno to calibrate the air tables. Things that we actually control on the dyno that affect VE are engine RPM and throttle position. We have already discussed how port velocity affects VE, so let us look at how throttle position and RPM influence port velocity. Higher RPMs have higher piston speeds. The speed the piston travels affects port velocity. Changing the throttle position changes the whole size the air flows through which affects port velocity. At any given throttle position or hole size, versus RPM or piston speed, the engine will flow a specific amount of air. So by holding the bike at the RPM and the throttle positions that match the cells on the VE table, we can check the airflow at each cell, and then correct it to match the actual airflow through the engine with the new hard parts. The ECM looks at the VE cell that aligns with the throttle position and engine RPM that we are currently running in, then the ECM looks at the air conditions, temperature, pressure, humidity, to determine how much oxygen is entering the combustion chamber. With that information the ECM calculates how long to leave the injector open to achieve the target air-fuel ratio from the air-fuel ratio table. If the VE cell is correct and matches the actual airflow through the engine at this RPM and throttle position, then the air-fuel ratio measured at the exhaust will match the target air-fuel ratio on the air-fuel ratio table. If it does not match, that means the VE table cell we were running in is incorrect for the actual airflow through the engine at this point. So we change the number in the cell to make it correct. We are not actually measuring airflow, we are checking the math the ECM does. As an example, if the air-fuel ratio target is 13 to 1, and you are running the bike at 60% throttle at 2500 RPM, and the VE cell for the front cylinder has 90 in it. If the AFR measured on the dyno reads 14.5 to 1, it means the engine is pumping more air than the 90 VE represents. So we have to make the VE number in that cell bigger. A general rule is 10 VE equal 1 air fuel ratio point, 14.5 is 1.5 air fuel ratio points leaner, so we will add 15 to the 90 making it 105. When all the cells on the VE table are calibrated to match the actual air flow through our engine, then we can go to the air fuel ratio, AFR table and request any AFR target we want within the range of the AFR table. Then read that same AFR at the exhaust as we ride through that cell. When the VE cells are correct, you can change the tune which is the AFR table, very quickly and easily. If the VE cells are correct you get the air fuel ratio you ask for. While sampling the air-fuel ratio of each cylinder, we do a dyno run for each throttle position represented on the VE table. Using the dyno graph displaying the actual air-fuel ratio as measured by our wideband O2 sensors in the exhaust, we adjust the VE cells that don't match the target air-fuel ratio from the air-fuel ratio table. Then we load the VE tables we edited and do the runs again to check our results, then repeat as necessary until the actual air-fuel ratio matches the requested air-fuel ratio. More about this in a future lesson.